Hi folks, this is Ben here from CarryPad.com. I've got the Motorola Zoom here and I just got the 3.1 update. The Zoom finally found it. Um, and I wanted to show you a couple short things that have come along with that, particularly the improved browser responsiveness and uh, the enhanced quick controls in the browser. Um, but let's just walk you through a little bit of this. So, the first thing I noticed is, uh, thankfully, this little uh, lock button here is oh, it's so much smoother than it was before. Um, if you watched my previous video, you would have seen me complaining about this. It was really unresponsive. Um, as you can see, it's not tracking you know, perfectly on my finger there, but the frame rate is so much better, so much more satisfying. Um, previously in 3.0, uh, when you started to... I'll let it return to how it was. Um, it would move pretty well, but as soon as the ripples started appearing, it would just lag like crazy. So that's way better this time around. Um, not really a big deal for usability, but visually it looks so much better. Um, so here is uh, the home screen again. I haven't seen a lot of performance change in this, even though they said that um, transitions were supposed to be a little bit better. Um, I've actually discovered uh, that if you go into the settings and go to screen, um, if you have this animation option here, you can say no animations, some animations, all animations. Um, if you have it on all animations, which it should be by default, the home screen performance when you're moving between them uh, gets uh, really jittery when you've got big widgets or a lot of stuff on home screen. So I don't know if you'll be able to pick it up uh, with the camera I'm recording right now, but right before the screen settles into, sp into uh, its spot right there, you'll see it sort of moving way less smoothly than it should be, uh, which is sort of disappointing because this is really powerful hardware compared to a lot of the other things out there. So actually, if you disable that and put no animations, uh, um, even though clearly this is still an animation, it's it's almost always totally smooth, just as smooth as you know any other home screen that has nothing on it. So um, I don't know exactly why that is, but for me it looks a lot better. You may uh, want to do that. I think if you put it on some animations, it will still give you that same smooth performance. Um, Yep, still smooth performance, and I'm, I've actually been enjoying the lack of animations. It makes the whole tablet feel more responsive, actually, because you're not waiting to watch transitions into applications. So, for instance, if I go to the browser, it's just I tap it, and it's there a few milliseconds later. I mean, that's impressive. So, I mean, obviously the browser's running in the background, but that's how quick it is. Um, if I do turn the animations back on, you'll see that there is a little while that I actually have to wait before I can start doing anything. So now transitions are on, and I actually have to, you know, watch it do its little thing before there. Uh, for me personally, it just feels more responsive for the second that I tap on it. Having it instantly show up is, is pretty cool, so um, I'm actually liking this and enjoying it so far, so I think I'm going to leave that on for a little while. So now that we're in the browser here, um, I can show you, look at this scrolling performance. This is way better than I've seen in the past here. Um, we've got flash elements, two flash elements on the page right here and it is super responsive, super smooth. Um, it doesn't have the same same inertia formula or equation as you'll feel on the iPad, um, which I think is preferred by some people just because it feels quite natural, but this is very close um, and the performance is, is pretty much dead on to match. Um, they also talked about in 3.1 the zooming performance being, they said, dramatically improved, and I'm certainly seeing some of that um, although not right now actually, Oop. so yeah, see there, it's that's real quick, way better than it's been in the past, uh, the font snaps into that high resolution really quickly, let's actually look at a page load here, so I've tapped that, and you should see the loading bar going across the top, so again, here's the zooming, does have its its hanging moments from time to time, but when it is going, which appears to be most of the time, it's very responsive, and I'm really happy to see that. This is something that Apple has always beaten Android devices on, but it seems that they're really making some strides here. It's probably because they're now starting to hardware hardware accelerate some of their applications. So there's that. Let me tell you a little bit about the quick controls. So you'll notice on here there's no URL bar, there's no controls at all in this browser. Um, that's because I have something called quick controls, which is this little thing 
from either left or right enabled. Um, and I will show you how to do that in case you're watching and you haven't discovered it yet. You're going to go into your settings and it's under the labs tab and it is this little quick controls button right here. I want to make sure that I have my text focused for you guys so you can read it. So that's how you turn on quick controls. This is what the browser the browser looks like uh, without quick controls. Um, and so, you know, obviously you've got your tabs at the top and you switch between them like this and if you want to enter a URL or whatever, it's all right on the screen. Um, but you can actually get a whole bunch of, you know, you can get this uh, extra 10% or so of screen real estate back by turning on quick controls. And so here's the browser now with quick controls turned on. As I said, you just roll in from the side and you've got pretty much everything here. You've got back and forward, refresh, you've even got tab management now with 3.1. Uh, you can add new tabs, close tabs, and then there is uh, a menu here. You can do incognito now, which I don't know if that's new. Uh, but I certainly hadn't found it before, so that may be new as of 3.1. Uh, you've got find on page, share page, save page, page info, downloads, and settings. So the great thing about this now, Quick Controls uh, used to just sort of let you enter URLs easily without um, and switch, um, you know, go back, forward, refresh without having that all on your screen. But now you've got all this extra stuff. So if I want to fire up a tab, just hit the plus, go to a site. Let's say that one's loading. I want to be opening another one right now. And now while that one's loading, I'm going to use the little tab manager here to switch back to one of the ones I've already loaded. Gonna, you know, browse around. It's 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 called quick controls and it is quick controls. It's really handy. So let me show you here how the tab management works. Um, you'll see across the top there are black uh, borders there, they have the URL and the name of the site in them. And you get a thumbnail right here, so if you you roll your finger onto that tab button, that pops up. Um, and then as you roll your finger up and down near these black bars, you get the thumbnails of each one. And this is pretty quick and pretty intuitive. You know, you visually see which one you want, and then you just let go, and it'll take you straight there. Actually, that didn't go to the one that I wanted. There we go. Try that a couple more times. I'm interested to see how that uh, sliding gesture holds up to having a number of tabs open. So just as an experiment, let's do that. So we've got seven tabs open now some of them loading and it's not too bad so as you can see it's just going to expand this list bigger and bigger as you add more tabs and flipping through the thumbnails doesn't seem to be impacted too much by having seven tabs open here So there you go, that's that. Um, I also wanted to look at the YouTube performance on here. Um, in the past, I have not had good experience with flash video playback um, on this device. Well, actually on other devices. Um, but, you know, uh, Adobe's released a 10 point, Flash 10.3 update, I want to say it is, uh, recently. So I'm going to have a look to see if that has really done anything in terms of performance here. I was trying a 720p video earlier and it was actually working pretty well so I want to have a look at that again.
So this is a this will be a great video to give this a try. If you've never seen this Ken Blocks uh, Jamakana video here, it is awesome. Go watch it. Let's see how it plays uh, at a couple different resolutions. So I'm going to go full screen, starting with uh, 480 right now. See what happens when we introduce a little movement into the video. So it's playing real smooth, looks fine. I'm going to crank it up to 720, see if it can handle that. So this is 720p playback right now, uh, running perfectly smooth as far as I can tell, um, and it looks really good. And I believe if we go up into the 1080 range, it is going to start to choke on this video a little bit, but let's give that a try just uh, for curiosity's sake. So here's 1080, and if that was... If that little bit right there was any indication, it doesn't look like it's going to be able to handle that all that well. Let's see if we can get it to load uh, actually a portion of this. So yeah, 1080 it is not going to do. Let's kick it back down to 720. Yep, 720p is working absolutely well on here. So flash playback is quite good. Um, my only issue being that it's very hard to play with some of these controls, obviously because you don't have a mouse. Although 3.1 did add um, a significant number of uh, USB peripheral support, although this device doesn't have a full-size USB port, so I can't hook up a wired USB mouse. But if I get my hands on a Bluetooth one, I'll give that a try. So I am impressed with the performance of the flash playback right here. Um, though one thing I was noticing earlier uh, on one of the videos I was watching in 720 was that the voice uh, was lagging, the sound was lagging a little bit behind the video itself. So I'll have to continue testing that, make sure that, that doesn't, that's not a persistent issue. Um, and the last thing I wanted to mention here is that 3.1 has added a check now um, button on your update screen, which is uh, sort of handy. Um, now, although previous to this, when everybody has been checking for to get the 3.1 update, that button didn't exist. So it's sort of funny that it's here now, but that'll be handy for the future, um, being able to check without restarting your device or having to change the date and time on it, as some people have been doing. So that's Android 3.1. Uh, a couple improvements, not everything that I've shown here, like I said, uh, the USB support is a big one, but since I don't have full-size USB, I can't really demonstrate that for you. Uh, but as far as flash playback working very well, I'm impressed. Um, seen some performance, a little bit of performance improvements, and quick controls in the browser are something that I'm very much enjoying. So that's 3.1 on the Motorola Zoom, and I thank you guys for watching. Please check us out at carrypad.com for more info. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.